Hi friends, how are you doing today? Well, today we are going to be talking about sticking up for yourself. What does sticking up for yourself mean? What do you think? Sometimes children are shy and don't say what they want or need. But sticking up for yourself, saying what you need or want, can be an important step towards getting it. There are many reasons why someone or a child would not stick up for themselves. What do you think? Sometimes they may feel embarrassed about calling attention to themselves. Hi friends, thanks for joining me. Today we are going to be talking about sticking up for yourself. What does sticking up for yourself mean? Do you have any examples? Sometimes children are shy and don't say what they need or want. By sticking up for yourself, saying what you need or want can be an important step forward to getting it. There are many reasons why some people or children don't stick up for themselves. They may feel embarrassed about calling attention to themselves. Uh, they may feel that if they stick up for themselves, other children will get angry or even pick on them. Some children may not feel that their needs or feelings are very important, but everyone's feelings are important and everyone is important. Everyone deserves to be heard and everyone deserves to try to get what they need to be happy. Today, I have a wonderful story that I would like to read to you. It is called Jungle Bullies. It's by Stephen Crow and illustrated by Vincent Noggin. Let's get started. One morning, Elephant went down to the pond for his bath. But who were there first? Hippo and he was taking up a lot of space. Elephant glared at Hippo. Get out of the water, Hippo, he said. I want to bathe in peace. Is that nice? No, I don't think so. Elephant was bigger than Hippo, so Hippo splashed out of the pond. But who was lying on the path? Who do you think? Lion. And he was in the way. Hippo nudged Lion with his snout. Move over, Lion, he said. I need to get by you. Hippo was bigger than Lion, so Lion ran into the tall grass. But who was sleeping in his favorite spot? Leopard, and he was snoring loudly. Lion glared at him. Get moving, Leopard, he said. I want this space for my nap. Lion was bigger than Leopard, so Leopard ran to a nearby tree. But who was sitting in the branches? Monkey, and he was enjoying the cool breeze. Leopard glowered at him. Get off this branch, monkey, he said. Leopard was bigger and fiercer than monkey. So monkey ran away to another tree. But who did he find there? His mama. He jumped into her arms. Mama, said monkey, leopard is bullying me. He kicked me out of my tree. Mama replied, son, you have to stand up to bullies. You go back to leopard and you tell him there's enough room for two on that branch. But monkey was still scared. He's big, said monkey, and he wants that branch all to himself. What would you do if you were scared and you wanted to go talk to the person that maybe you were scared of? Would you have someone help you? Would you just buck up and be brave and, and go to that person? What would you do? Monkey's mama said, then I'll go with you. When Leopard saw the monkeys coming, his tail twitched nervously. Mama whispered some words in Monkey's ears. 
Monkey took a deep breath. <sighs> then he said to Leopard, "Don't you tell me what to do. This tree is big enough for two. Share it with me as a friend. Don't be mean to me again." Leopard looked at Monkey. He looked at Mama. Okay, you can stay," he said. He turned around, and Monkey and Mama moved closer. As they sat, Leopard could see Lion sleeping in the tall grass. He thought about how Lion had taken his napping spot. He thought about Monkey's words. He got an idea. What do you think that idea is? Leopard whispered in Mama's ear. Then they all jumped down and ran over to Lion. Leopard took a deep breath. <sighs> Don't you tell me what to do. This spot's big enough for two. Share it with me as a friend. Don't be mean to me again. Lion looked at Leopard. He looked at the monkeys. Okay, you can stay. He said. He moved over, and Leopard and the others joined him. Then Lion saw Hippo on the path. He thought about how Hippo had made him move. He thought about Leopard's words. He got an idea. Lion whispered in Leopard's ear. Then Lion, Leopard, Monkey, and Mama. Ran over to Hippo. Lion took a deep breath. <sighs> Don't you tell me what to do. This path's big enough for two. Share it with me as a friend. Don't be mean to me again. Hippo looked at Lion. He looked at the other animal. Okay, you can stay," he said. Lion and the others joined him. Then Hippo saw Elephant in the distance. He thought about how Elephant had made him get out of the water. He thought about Lion's words. He got an idea. Hmm. I wonder what it is. Hippo whispered in Lion's ear. Then Hippo, Lion. Leopard, monkey, and mama scowled at elephant. Hippo took a deep breath. <sighs> Don't you tell me what to do. This pond's big enough for two. Share it with me as a friend. Don't be mean to me again. Elephant looked at Hippo. He looked at the other animals. Come on in," he said. Hippo plunged into the water. Soon he and Hel Elephant were chasing each other. "This is fun," said Elephant. "This is fun," said Hippo. Lion, Leopard, Monkey, and Mama joined in too, and they all said, "Big or little, large or small, this pond's big enough for all. Bullies aren't ever fair." It's a lot more fun to share. The end. You know, I really like this book because, even though, when we are mean to someone, and that tends to have a domino effect, where then someone might be mean to another person, and so on and so forth, we can always revert back to kindness. And learning how to share. So, this month I really want you to focus on being kind, sharing, and remember to stand up for yourself when others are not being kind to you. All right, love you, miss you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.